And best analysts are closely monitoring developments around the coronavirus pandemic for its impact on financial markets and the implications for the overall insurance industry. This is being done on a global basis as the situation continues to evolve. I'm John Weber for AM Best TV. I'm joined today by two key members of AM Best leadership team, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer Jim Gallard and Chief Rating Officer Stefan Holzberger. Stefan, let's start with you. What steps is AM Best taking amid the outbreak of the coronavirus to monitor and gauge the impact on the insurance industry? Right, John. So I think you could say that we're taking very similar steps to the insurance companies that are operating in the insurance industry in the U.S. and overseas. Clearly, we're monitoring the situation as, as it's rapidly unfolding. We're taking a look at the economic uh, developments as well as the potential downturn in the financial markets. We've recently revised our outlook for the life and annuity segment from stable to negative, and this is really driven by a number of factors. First and foremost, again, the economic ramifications of the coronavirus, the potential for um, prolonged negative growth in the U.S. economy, as well as many other markets around the world. We're looking very closely at the implications for interest-sensitive products, as well as ongoing spread compression. So we know that the life and annuity insurance companies in the United States particularly, as well as globally, learned quite a few important lessons from the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. Asset liability, liability management has really improved. Access to liquidity has been a priority since the financial crisis more than 10 years ago. But these are unprecedented events. The economic downturn really what we've seen so far is severe and there's really no knowing how much farther that might uh, transgress. So it's something we're monitoring very carefully but we do feel out of the three segments, PC, life and annuity and health, right now the life and annuity carriers are likely to be most severely affected by this, uh, by this pandemic. And then finally, what else we're doing? We're devising some stress testing. You know, this is generally an approach when we see an unprecedented event like this. We did something similar during the financial crisis. We did something uh, more recently during the Eurozone financial crisis, which took place a few years later. And what we mean by this kind of form of stress testing that we'll be rolling out in the coming weeks, we're taking a look at the implications on risk-adjusted capitalization. We're gonna stress test investments, we're going to stress test reserve adequacy, as well as other aspects of the risks borne by the insurance companies that we rate. And then one last point, if you kind of harken back to the financial crisis of 08 and 09, it was for many companies in the insurance industry more of a liquidity event. So we're going to be, in addition to looking at risk-adjusted capitalization on a stress basis, we're going to be looking at those accesses to liquidity as well as the laddering and maturity uh, timing of uh, debt securities in the capital structure of insurance companies. Jim, how is AM Best communicating with clients? Our goal is to be as transparent and communicative with our clients um, as possible. We want to, them to understand what we're doing um, in the face of this crisis, and we un want to understand what they're doing. Um, obviously, our first concern is the health and safety of our employees, our clients, and our stakeholders. Um, and in that, we have, we have moved many of our meetings um, to video conference, and where that's not possible, into conference call to avoid face-to-face um, -face contact, to kind of take those precautions um, very much to heart. Um, we are also issuing a questionnaire to our rated entities, um, asking them how are they handling the crisis, um, how are they, what do they see in their operations, um, what changes they're seeing to their forecasts, what lines do they see most hit, their assumptions, and what kind of stress testing they're doing um, with their own business operations. Um, understanding these companies have a lot going on um, as they spend resources to handle um, the crisis, um, answer questionnaires, um, regular calls. We are moving back the deadline to our SRQ, originally scheduled to be a deadline of April 1st. We're moving that deadline back to May 1st um, for all companies that don't have the rating due between March and April. Um, and lastly, um, you can expect us to put out many uh, market commentaries, special reports um, on the most impacted lines as this crisis continues to evolve um, and continues to impact the industry. 
Stefan, what specific areas will AM best be monitoring as we move forward here? Right. So, John, as I mentioned, it's a rapidly evolving situation. Really, what we're going to be doing over the next weeks and months is just taking the pulse of the global economy, the financial markets, really trying to get our arms around how severe is this event really going to be and how long lasting. You know, today, it's clearly difficult to understand the full ramifications on GDP, on the investment markets, um, as well as on various insurance products, right? I mentioned how the interest sensitive products on the life and annuity side uh, are clearly going to be affected by this crisis. But on the PNC side, we also see certain classes of business, whether it's uh, travel insurance, trade credit, um, many other products that could very well uh, come in business interruption. There may be exclusions, but there could be uh, different interpretations around those exclusions in the U.S. and elsewhere. So that's something we're going to be monitoring very closely. Most of the companies on the PNC side, we feel, are well protected. Their core lines of business, whether it's on the personal lines, commercial line side, or in the reinsurance segment, you know, those main lines of business are going to be probably more indirectly affected by the pandemic and uh, couple that with the fact that really all segments of the market are quite well capitalized, again, with ample liquidity. We feel companies are well positioned to handle a certain level of severity. But as I mentioned, really the ultimate uh, ramifications are just certainly uncertain at this point. We know there's going to be a lot of pain felt and as a major investor, in these organizations, you know, the insurance segment um, is going to also feel that from an investment performance standpoint. But, you know, if it's a very prolonged recessionary environment, you know, that's going to be a strain really on all companies that we follow at AM Best. And finally, certainly the healthcare sector, right? Our health insurers, um, there's a lot of uncertainty. We can certainly expect the usage provider services is really going to increase, but how that cost is going to be borne between the health insurers rated by AM Best uh, in relation to state and the federal government, again, only time will tell on that front. Thanks, Stefan. Jim, I'm sure we'll be hearing more from you in the coming weeks and months. Absolutely. For AM Best TV, I'm John Weber.